Here we are at the very end of this whopper of a chapter, Chapter 8, Reproductive Function. This is Dr. DeShavo, and we are going to hop right into the end of this. We only have about 20 slides left, give or, give or take, and we'll finish this up. So let's talk about viral STIs, or genital herpes for example. So this is going to be from herpes simplex virus, and there is different types. So the interesting thing with this little virus is it travels along nerves that are along what are called dermatomes. Dermatomes we'll talk about in nervous system. It's the superficial innervation to the skin, and these will travel to the nerve root where it actually stays dormant until its next outbreak, which will occur at the same site. So type 1 occurs above the waist, manifests as a cold sore. You can put sore in there. 2 is below the waist. You can transfer these. <laughs> 1 can go to 2, 2 can go to 1 um, through oral genital sexual contact. And some patients don't understand that. So that is a good thing to know. And if somebody has the herpes simplex virus, they should be aware that if they're having an outbreak, not to have oral sex for that reason. So it begins with a tingling or a burning sensation, and that lesion appears as a vesicle surrounded by redness. It can rupture and leave a painful ulceration. A crust forms over it, and it'll heal in three to four weeks. So when you're in that outbreak, it will increase the risk of infection to other people and your ability to contract other STIs because it's an open wound. Here is a picture of that viral movement. So all this is, is the virus will enter through a mucous membrane or the skin and what it does is it will travel up these nerves all the way back towards the spinal cord and it'll hide in this little bulge here, <clears throat> which is a dorsal root ganglion, which you don't need to know. Just know that it'll lay dormant in those nerves until the next outbreak where it will travel down again and manifest through the same area of the skin and mucous membranes. Okay, moving into HPVs, or human papillomaviruses. Candelomata acuminata is the virus that will lead to this, okay? Um, or is the manifestation of the virus, and it will show up as little growths. And these little growths have a cauliflower-like appearance. They'll generally manifest around the genitals, the cervix, the anus. You can also get them in the mouth. Um, maybe raised, they may be flat, they could be whitish pink, cauliflower like, large, barely visible, you know, some people get them, they're so small, they don't realize that they're infected with HPV. Abnormal bleeding and discharge. And the problem with this is it can lead to cervical cancers with the HPVs and also mouth cancers. Trichomoniasis is going to be a parasite, Trichomonas vaginalis, and this is a one-celled organism that can burrow under that mucosal lining, okay? Um, in males, it'll usually stay in the urethra, cause no problems. In the female, It'll become a problem and manifest as large amounts of odorous, frothy, white vaginal discharge. That, to me, manifestation would be a good way to remember this infection and this parasite. Okay, This can also lead to cervical cancer. All right, let's give you a quick question. HPV can lead to which type of complications? So breast cancer, mouth sores, benign growths on the external genital cervix and anus, and infections that lay dormant in nerves. What do you think the answer is? You can pause it if you need, and otherwise, I'm moving on to cancers. 
So cancers are malignancies. These will spread to the surrounding tissues and metastasize to and from other sites. Some have a high rate of treatments. We're going to talk about testicular and also prostate. Some have high rates of mortality and ovarian cancer falls into that group. And that's quite often because the diagnosis for ovarian cancer is missed. The signs and symptoms are a bit obscure. It's generalized bloating and discomfort in the abdomen for a female in the early stages. So if that's all she's feeling, females tend to feel that way with the waxing and waning of their menstrual cycle anyway. It can be overlooked. We're going to look at all of these examples. So penile cancer is rare. The exact cause is unknown. Obviously, this is not something a male would want to progress. It'll start as a small lesion and progress all the way up to large lesions. I didn't pull those pictures offline, but you could see some pretty progressed penile cancers if you want to. If you have a day off, you're looking for something to do. So prognosis is good with early treatments. So you can't let this go. You should never let this go, gentlemen and ladies, okay? And they can go in, as I was looking at some of, or looking for some pictures to test you on, I actually saw that they'll use that Mohs method of removing superficial cancers. Well, they'll take layer after layer until the layer comes. If you don't, if you don't know what that is, it's M-A-O-H-S. And Mohs surgery is used in areas that are sensitive, such as the penis, but this is also used on the face for potential skin cancer. And they'll take a layer and then a deeper layer and then a deeper layer and keep testing it to see if there's cancerous cells until they get a clean layer. So I saw that that is one of the first treatments for penile cancer. Prostate cancer is pretty common in men. It's slow growing though. So luckily if you find it early enough in males, and this is something that they're screened for, they can take care of it pretty readily. They have really good treatments for this. So urinary difficulties would be an issue you would think of if there's a history of STIs, a family history of prostate cancer, androgen hormone replacement, anything that you could think that would affect that prostate could potentially lead to this. And obviously, just like BPH, as a tumor grows, it'll push on that urethra that passes through the prostate. Testicular cancer is known as a young man's cancer. And this is a slow growing or potentially fast growing tumor in the testes. Okay, and there's seminoa is slow growing. Non-seminoa is fast growing. Don't worry about it. You don't need to remember those. Just remember, it could be slow growing. I think it's more often slow growing, okay? So undescended testes is something that can lead to potential issues in the future with testicular cancer. Could be one side, could be both. Could metastasize, obviously, just like every other cancer could. So this would be an asymptomatic, hard, painless mass in the testes. Um, so males should check their testicles, just like a female checks her breast for breast cancer. And speaking of which, you're moving on to breast cancer here. And gosh, there's so many people with breast cancer. It is it's crazy. It's crazy. I'm sure in 50 to 100 years, somebody is going to say, ah, this is why there was such an upsurge of breast cancer. But at this point, we still don't have one thing that we could point our finger at. There's a multitude of things that can lead to it. So obviously those contributing factors are advancing age, early onset of menstruation, genetic issues like defects on the BRCA genes, obesity, chest wall radiation from other cancers, excessive alcohol consumption above one a day for females, exogenous estrogen exposure, like they're saying that we're exposed to excess estrogen and, um, you know, plastics and hormones and meats and things like that. Now, don't forget breast cancer can happen in men. So if a male finds a lump, it absolutely should be checked. So this usually originates in the duct system, but may also be the lobules. And remember, we looked at the lobules, <clears throat> excuse me, and the ducts that lead down to the nipple. So anywhere along that lining. Early, the tumor may be freely move, movable, 
but then it may fix as the cancer progression progresses. Most are estrogen dependent and it can metastasize and this is why we take the lymph nodes out. Um, and they also do variations of mastectomy as if they should be. First and foremost, they'll do the lumpectomies, then they'll do radiation and or chemo. The next is they'll do the mastectomy with the lymph nodes. And if it's really progressed, they can start to remove the fat and also the muscle on the chest wall if it's spread there. So manifestations, I just kept all those on there because breast cancer is something that we should have a good working knowledge about. Um, you know, so it could be asymptomatic. I know people who have I have not felt anything and ended up with breast cancer. Could feel a mass, could feel um, lumps in the axilla or the armpit, painless, change in the shape, size, feel of the breast or nipple. You can get something called pod orange where there is a um, change in the skin of the breast that it starts to look like the skin of an orange. Nipple drainage, of any time in a non-lactating non female should be checked. We all know this. Monthly self-breast examinations, mammograms, biopsy, um, and ultrasounds should be on there as well to help with the diagnosis. Chemo, radiation, surgery, hormone therapy, coping and support interventions, I think are so important. Very few, um, thank goodness, just a few but very dear family and friends of mine have had breast cancer in the past couple of years and boy, they need support. It is a very difficult thing for women to go through. Okay. So moving on, let's look at cervical cancers here. Almost all of them are caused by the HPV and I'm assuming the decline in the recent years has been through because of the vaccination. Hopefully, you know, safe sex, sex practices as well. So it could be asymptomatic. It could be discharge. You could have some bleeding between menstruation after intercourse or after menopause. And, you know, anything that goes out of the normal repetition of your daily activities and menstruations should be looked at. If you're bleeding between your menstrual, you know, between your actual menstruation, it should be checked, obviously, and after intercourse. So we know pap smear will check this, and the HPV can be used for prevention, the vaccine, I should say. So let's practice some of these. All right, so if you take a look at this, <laughs> I'm tricking you. What do you think might be happening here? This is a little difficult. Let me... <coughs> <laughs> Let me give you a little bit of an in. It's where the arrow is. <laughs> Got that. And your patient's facing this way. Maybe that helps a little bit. So what we've got here is your uterus. Right? Here's the bladder. Here's the pubic symphysis. All right. What do you think now? Okay, cervical cancer. It's right at the bottom of the uterus where the cervix is, and you can see it distended a little bit posteriorly in that patient. Let's see what's going on here. There we go. Okay, so, oh, hold on a second. We're going to look at those in the future. All right, here we go. This one I think will be pretty easy. What is that presentation of the skin on the left, though? So don't look back in the notes. I want you to think for a minute, and you can pause it. That's that pod orange presentation, the dimpling of the skin, like the skin of an orange, and this would be breast cancer. This one should be pretty easy. My guess is you already got it. Yeah, this is going to be penile cancer. So, you know, any change on the surface of the penis, obviously, you would want that to be checked. Kind of gave away the, kind of gave away the answer here. This is going to be a cervical cancer as well. Okay. So let's look at this picture. 
once again, this gives you a good chance to get oriented as to the anatomy. I don't know if I can move this over so you can see. There we go. Okay, so here is the structure we're talking about. Oh, now you probably got it, right? This is going to be the male. Here's the bladder. There's the prostate. Here's normal. What do you think is happening there? Yeah, if you need another minute, go right ahead. That is going to be your prostate. And this is going to be prostatic cancer. So this opposed to BPH, with BPH, the entire thing is red and swollen and distended. This is one area of tissue change that we're seeing in this patient. And last but not least, normal is on the left, abnormal is on the right. This one's pretty easy to spot, and this would be testicular cancer. And once again, it won't be the entire thing that's swollen and infected. It's little areas. Not that it can't spread, of course, but because it's patchy, that denotes a little bit better in these examples that it's cancer. So endometrial cancer is cancer of the inner lining of the uterus, you should ask there. And I was surprised to see this as a fourth, fourth most frequent cancer in women, interestingly enough. The exact cause is unknown, but I can tell you this, those cells lining the inside of the uterus are constantly changing. And with highly mitotic cells, there's just going to be more chances for abnormalities to happen in those cells leading to cancer. Because cancer, once again, is when cells go wild and a normal cell DNA starts to break down in a way such that it doesn't reproduce normally and eventually it can turn into a cancerous cell. So once again, abnormal painless vaginal bleeding, bleeding at times other than menstrual cycle is a good hit as well. Non-bloody vaginal discharge and pelvic pain. I would also add pain with intercourse probably would be a contributing factor as well. Ovarian cancer, nice ninth most frequent cancer in women, but the fifth leading cause of cancer death. And once again, I think it's because it's difficult to find and people just have abdominal distension and some pelvic pain that they ignore until it's progressed. There's a genetic predisposition and there's an affiliation with those defects in the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene that we also see in breast cancer. So you have to just watch that correlation if they have the BRCA abnormality. All right, it has been a long journey, but here we are at the end of reproductive. I will leave you with a question, and also, if you have any questions for me, you know what to do. Shoot me an email, I'll be happy to get back to you. So a female who has persistent abdominal distension for five months should be checked by your doctor. My gift to you, true or false. Thank you so much. This has been a fun journey with reproductive. I will talk to you in the next video.